Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and this is our next Saturday with Stacy, YouTube class number 458 and it is a wow class. It is heavy in technique. I might even have to bring my pause face back. That's where I stop so you can get a piece of paper and pencil and either jot down this YouTube number or take notes. <laughs> It's definitely, I might have to pull the pause face. What's a pause face? Well, I, I stop and I say, okay, pause me now and go get a piece of paper and pencil because in it, it's inevitable that you'll pause me and like my eyes will be half closed or I've got this weird expression on my face. So technique based today without question. I've got 3D embossing folders. I've got alcohol ink markers. I've got stays on. I've got foils. I've got... Oh my gosh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And we're kind of going to go on a crafty journey. I'm going to start in one place and then I'm going to take a hard left <laughs> and move over to, to do something else, only then to come back and make a hard right and maybe bring them both together. Two different things, bring them both together so you can see how in conjunction they just make happiness. <laughs> just so pretty so you're gonna have to have a little faith a little trust and a little pixie dust that even though you may not it, it may not all click in the beginning by the time we get to the end you're like I got it <laughs> so I've got winner winner chicken dinner to talk about I can pronounce I think both of these names or at least come pretty darn close. I'll announce those in just a minute. I also want to let you know about the warehouse sale from back in April. If you had placed an order for a sidekick bundle, those I expect to have completely finished by, I'm hoping late next week is when I think that they'll be done and, and completely finished and you will have either um, received an awaiting shipment notice or actually have a tracking number for your orders. Some of you already have your tracking numbers. So I'm hoping to have those completed late next week. That means it's time to start the warehouse sale from April. April 22nd, I think was the day it started. So if you have a pay now order, wahoo kachoo, you are done. You need to do nothing more. But if you have a pay later order, this is, this is, hey, remember you got this order. Poke, poke, poke. <laughs> and we will be sending out in batches, small batches, because we can only do so many orders at a time. We'll be sending out payment requests via PayPal. The email comes from PayPal on our behalf. Do you have to have a PayPal account to pay for your order? No, you can pay with any major credit card or debit card, whatever makes your heart happy. And if you don't want to use that invoice at all, there's a link right on that invoice. It's all encrypted. And But if you don't want to do that at all, you are welcome to call us here at the shop Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's 10 a.m. Sunday, California time. That would be 10, 11, 12, 1, 1 p.m. in in. in over Eastern in New York, 1 p.m. in New York, so at noon Central. So you can give us a call Monday through Friday to pay for your order over the phone. Just know that once that PayPal invoice hits your inbox, you only have a limited time to pay that invoice. If we don't have payment by the date requested, and we give you, I think we give you five or six days to pay it. If you don't have it paid by the time that we've requested it, well, your order will be canceled, and I want to make you aware, subsequent orders may also be canceled. We have we have a, a we have a, um, a fail safe in our in our system that was written in that you know if if certain orders are canceled, it can trigger cancellations of all your other pay later orders. So <laughs> I'm just giving you a heads up. Not that we wanted to put that in. I really didn't want to put that in, but unfortunately, over the years. To be able to still offer pay laters to people, then we we have to make sure that you know the people who who really do use the pay laters and and are just wonderful about it that they get to continue to use that option and the ones that take advantage of that option 
don't get to use that option anymore. So we had some software put in and I wanna let you know that a, a triggering effect would be not paying your warehouse sale order. So I'm just being as front upfront as I can. You've had since April 22nd to get it together. And again, we're taking it slow. We're not pushing out. You know, we're not gonna send every pay later invoice we've got right now. No, little batches so that we can we can feel accomplished when we finish the next the next set of orders and then we move to the next one and we feel good about ourselves <laughs> when we're like yay we finished on to the next batch so just keep in mind that that is where we are at and if you have a switch machine a black switch machine i anticipate that those will start going out at the end of july all we have left are black switch machine orders if you had a white switch machine and you, you should already have it and be using it and playing it and loving with it. So I, I, I hope that everybody is enjoying their switch machines. And for those of you with a sidekick, if you don't already have your tracking number, hang tight, you will soon. Okay, I've got winner, winner chicken dinner to announce. And these lovely ladies have won a $25 gift card to Scrapbooking Made Simple. And you may just find some fabulous things here today to pick up. I've got some really beautiful product here and hopefully showing you a couple different ways to use things that you might not have known about. Wouldn't that be exciting? It's totally technique based. So our first winner winner and they posted their comment on YouTube 457. Um, live chat comments don't count if you're uh, watching the premiere and there's a live chat going on. That doesn't count. You have to post your comment below me and to be able to post a comment you have to hit the subscribe button yes all right our first winner winner is suzanne suzanne smith hello suzanne i can pronounce your whole name that makes me a winner winner chicken dinner congratulations my dear you've got a 25 dollars gift card it's already in your online account you don't have to do anything to claim your prize it's on it's it's there go spend it have fun enjoy and uh and we hope you buy something that makes your heart happy our second winner winner is cookie cookie padilla i'm, I'm thinking it's padilla hello cookie hello hello <laughs> you call the shop often <laughs> i hear oh it's cookie on the phone we actually have two cookies we <laughs> we have we have cookie d and cookie p <laughs> So, Cookie, congratulations. You have a $25 gift card in your online account, and we hope you enjoy it and spend it on something that will make your heart happy. All right, girls, let's do the winner, winner, chicken dinner dance. Are you ready? You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo. Could you? For you. Congratulations to the both of you. And again, if you want a chance to be a winner, winner, we announce two every week. Post your comment below. We have software that randomly selects you and you just never know when I'm gonna call your name, right? You just never know. So, I am super excited. We're starting the warehouse sale. <laughs> it's only July. <laughs> Some of you are like, wait a minute, they placed their order in April and she's just now starting to ship? Yes, I am. But you know what? These people who took advantage of that sale in April, they, they got dies for a dollar ninety nine that were twenty dollar dies. <laughs> they got they got value. We had things for twenty five cents dies. I think there was memory box dies for twenty five cents or something like that. Incredible value. And for that, these lucky lucky peeps, these lucky SMS peeps who got to take advantage of those wonderful prices. They were willing to wait just a little bit to give us time to get everything organized and start shipping so i'm excited we will have the second part part two of the warehouse sale this year it will not happen until all of the orders ship from part one so once i know once i have a a timeline of when i think we'll be done with shipping all the orders from the the april sale we will have our second half of the sale and that will probably be october i think late october is what I'm aiming for and we'll have manufacturers that were not in the first warehouse sale. <laughs> Sizzix. There's going to be a lot of great product for the second warehouse sale. Um, we split it up in two this year to be able to um, to be able to fulfill better. 
We usually just did one big sale, but it, with the way things are right now and with our staffing position, it was just better for us to split it up and set a much more reasonable goal for everybody. And I'll tell you, my staff is thrilled with how it's going. We have, we've changed some things. We've, we've added some systems into our software to make things a little easier. And everybody's got a big smile on their face right now. And usually when it comes to the warehouse sale, they're like, she did it again. But this time they're like, oh, I like it. <laughs> so if it goes smoothly this time, I'm hoping that October will even be better. But stay tuned. I'll announce when the next warehouse sale is a little bit closer to that time once I know how fulfillment is for this sale. But congratulations to all of you who got amazing value amazing values so all right I think I'm gonna tilt down we're gonna get started for today I've got 3d embossing folders I've got foils I've got glitters I've got inks I've got a little bit of everything and again we're gonna take a little bit of a a, a, a journey a little bit of a, a a road trip here and there I'm gonna start with something and then we're gonna stop that I'm gonna move to something else and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna make it all work together it's good to see everybody <laughs> down we go bye okay and then let me zoom on in zoom 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 and down and zoom 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 okay so just some quick samples Ooh. I don't know if you can see the holographic aspect to the background on this. Very cool. So there's one. Ooh, isn't that pretty? That just came out beautiful. There's two. And one more. What do you think? So pretty. Look at that. Okay. So what are we going to start with today? Well, let me put my glasses on. I am going to start with 3D embossing folders and I've got oodles of them. None of them are holiday related. <laughs> These are from Nellie's Choice. I want to tell you they are they are unbelievably value priced. I could not believe the value on their 3D embossing folders. I want to say they retail for about $7.50 and then of course we put them on sale. I've got more than this. I've got a whole stack of them and the the samples will show them to you but i in fact we even lost the packaging on this one but i think i'm going to start super easy and show people what a 3d embossing folder actually does <laughs> and i think i'm going to start i think i'm going to start with this one so this is a piece of molded plastic it opens, you fit your paper in it, and there's one side that is debossed and one side that is embossed. And when you put your paper in there and you sandwich it together and you put it through a die cutting machine, it's going to create a beautiful embossed piece of paper. This one happens to be a lovely rose. It really is so pretty. Now. It's not hard to do and the effect is immediate and gratifying and beautiful and a folder lasts forever and ever if you take care of it because it's just a piece of plastic. And there are oodles of YouTubes on things you can do with embossing folders. I'm going to be playing with embossing folders today but I'm certainly not going to be doing everything that can be done. What makes it a 3D embossing folder? Well, it's the depth of the impression that you're going to get. So I'm going to just show you how to use one and so this is just a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock and 
that I'm cutting. And I think I will roll through, I think I'll roll through two of them maybe. All right, let's roll through two and see what happens. Well, I'll roll them through one at a time, but I'm gonna do, I'm gonna roll it through twice. So I have two of them to play with. So I've cut my paper, open it up, put my paper in. You can use cardstock, you can use pattern paper. You, I mean, it's whatever paper makes your heart happy. I'm gonna be playing mostly with white paper today. And let's see if I can just center it just a little bit better. That looks good, I'm happy with that. I can see that my, my emboss side, the side that has ridges is facing up and the side that is kind of debossed that has channels is facing down. You want, and we even marked it top. A lot of manufacturers will put their little logo on the front so you know which is the front side of your embossing folder. If you don't have that, just look and see which has got the more of the raised edges or and which side has got the ones that are sunk in debossed and that's going to tell you your top and your bottom your bottom is always going to be the ones that are pushing up into the channels of the deboss side now being that this is a 3d embossing folder it's a little thicker than most it's not as thick as tim holtz or sizzix but it's thicker than a standard 2d embossing folder because the definition is going to be deeper the sandwich, if you're using a Big Shot machine, would be your would be your uh, base platform that comes with the machine. So base platform. It would be your Solo Shim that you typically use for your wafer style die, so your thinlets and your memory box and your Simply Defined. It would be your folder with your paper right down on that Solo Shim you're not going to add an additional cut plate. Normally, we sandwich almost everything, but not this time. This time we're going to put it right down on our solo shim. Now, if you look at your base, Ellison tells you to do a 3D embossing folder a little differently. They tell you to use it. It's right there. They tell you to not use the solo shim, but their embossing folders are much thicker. So sometimes you have to play with the shim to find out, well, do I need it, do I not need it? And you'll know right away, it will either go through or it won't. So if I were to follow Sizzix recommendation, now they're talking about their embossing folders and I just put down, I just put down it's this one right here. I just put down my plate, my embossing folder and my clear plate or a cup plate and I send it on through, it's going to do nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's really going to do nothing. You're going to get it all the way to the end and you're going to go open it up and you're going to say, hey, wait, what happened? <laughs> that's because the folder is not high enough. It's not tall enough to reach the roller that's in the machine that's causing the pressure to make that impression. So, I said, oh, okay, that didn't work. Let's add the shim back on in. And I'll do the same thing. Sometimes you have to add a little piece of paper maybe. Every embossing folder is different. Every company makes a different thickness of embossing folder. There are no standardized embossing folders. I sure do wish there were, but they're not. Every company's embossing folders are a little bit thicker or thinner than somebody else's. There's not a standardized size. So sometimes you got, or thickness, sometimes you got to play a little bit. Now I can already tell you that this is, let me back it up just a little bit. I can already tell you that this is a little bit harder to get through. It's, you know, it, it it's trying to grab it, which is perfect. Oh, look at that. Took it right without any problem. I can feel that it's being, that there's pressure being added. And when I'm done, let's go back down. When I'm done, this is what I've got. I'll zoom it in so you can see. And you can see the definition. 
That makes it a 3D embossing folder. That makes it a 3D embossing folder. Right? Pretty, right? So I'm going to do it twice. I'm going to do two. Just so I have two to play with. Bring my machine back over. Put it in. Oh, make sure my plate is in there. And send it on through. It'll take just a little bit of a give to get it to go through, but then it pretty much rolls through like butter. Easy peasy. This is not a difficult roll. And I did a wash, rinse, and repeat. Same folder, same image. And again, you can just use it again and again. And you can see the definition. You can see how high that is. That's what makes it a 3D embossing folder. You know, I think I'm going to take this one too. While I'm here and while I've got my machine, I'm going to do I'm going to do this flower as well. And I'm going to roll two of these. Now, I would not roll two pieces of paper at the same time. And people often say that if you missed your paper, you sometimes get a better impression, a deeper impression. I guess it really just depends upon what it is you're looking for. I'm really happy with the way it is. Sometimes using, uh, putting a little mist, uh, a little water on your paper will keep it from cracking if you've got a paper that tends to crack. I'm just using white cardstock, so I'm good to go. And I'm gonna wash, rinse, and repeat. So I have two of each folder. Once it grabs, you're good to go. Look at how pretty is that? Even just on white, it's beautiful. Uh, tonal card, a uh, simple monotone card can be so elegant, whether it be white on white on white or the same tones of blues or pinks. All right, I think that's good. That gives me something to play with. So for those of you who haven't seen embossing folders before, that's what they do. They're made of plastic, they're friendly, they're easy, they don't break, and they will last you a lifetime if you take care of them without any question. Now I think the first one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play with, so I'm using Stazon inks today because later on I'm gonna need a Stazon ink. Stazon ink is a permanent type of ink. The name really does define what it do does. It stays on. It is an alcohol-based ink and requires a solvent or alcohol to clean it up. It is not a dye-based ink, which means that it, if you stamp with it, it will stamp just fine. It will. It will stamp just fine. But if you, if you take a dye-based ink, like a Memento or a Hero Arts, and you put it on plastic, that, will, that dye based ink will wipe right off. However, if you take a stays on and you put it on plastic, it's going to dry and it's going to become permanent. Stays on's very much like a Sharpie or a big pin. Think about what you use a Sharpie or a big pin for. You write on glass, you write on plastic, you write on metal. Well, that's what a stays on does as well. You can use it on paper. I'll tell you though, to use it on paper, the colors come out very dark. 
they're very very dark on paper so for what I'm gonna do here typically I would probably go grab a dye based ink like a like a Hero Arts Cube or a Memento or a Tim Holtz, which is a dye-based ink. But since I'm playing with Stazon for the rest of the day, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and do this one in um, in our Stazon. And I guess I'm gonna use, I guess, you know, maybe I'll start with just a, no, maybe I'll start with a little bit of red. And I'm just gonna go right over the top. So you now can see that embossing come up. All of a sudden it's come up. Easier to see versus here. But I'm gonna add more color to it. I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna just kinda all over. Maybe I need to make something quick. I don't have a lot of time. I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to all over. And I'm a girl who likes color. <laughs> so I think I'm going to grab a little bit of my orange. And you could do this same thing with your dye based inks. I'm using my stays on. It's fine on paper. It dries instantly. It's an alcohol based product, so no problem. And maybe we add just a little bit of orange. I could come back maybe with a little bit more of my red. And I'm just wanting to get rid of my white, white, white paper because I need to get something done. I need it to be quick. I need it to be beautiful. And just like that, you've got a very pretty, very pretty little topper for a card or some, a, a layout. Gosh, if you're doing Disney and Beauty and the Beast, um, hello. And then I can trim it out. Now, the nice thing about these two folders that I'm using is that they'll let you trim it to almost any size you want. So you could use the full length of the folder or you could come in and trim it down. Because it's not an all over design, you have options. So it's not an all over design, so I can do it any size that makes my heart happy. Do I wanna use the full size? Do I wanna use smaller? It's up to me. Just add a little bit of color. Just because I just need something quick and easy and simple and I don't want to spend too much time on it. I need to, I just found out that I, I need a card for somebody's birthday and this is a super easy way to get it done. And just so we're apples to apples, I'll add the orange. red. Now this is crafting that is easy, no fuss, no muss. 
You really can't make a mistake. And let me trim this one down just a little bit. Just a little bit to the size that the folder typically is. And you can see where the bottom of the folder stops. So I'm just going to trim right along there so you can see what the what the size is. All right. So one folder and again, you could make it any size that makes your heart happy. I could take and I could cut this in an oval. You've got room. It's kind of nice that you have room. All right, so now I'm gonna do this one. And maybe I do this one in green. Now I've got some stays on on my craft mat. And again, stays on is a alcohol type product. So to get it up, I can use my baby wipes. But if it stays there too long, I'm going to just spray my craft mat down, a little bit of hand sanitizer, and wipe up. And it's almost like a, a white erase board. It just comes right off. And this is a Simply Refined craft mat. It's my craft mat. I was the very first company to come out with a craft mat that doesn't move. My craft mat has silicone on the back, so it stays. It's not sticky, but it grips to your table, and yet it is a non-stick surface. So anything can go on the top of it, and then the silicone on the back keeps it from moving. Since then, lots of people have, um, have had the same idea, and, um, and I'm pretty proud that people followed my lead. I'm, I'm happy with that because it just makes it just makes it better for everybody. Look at that. It just doesn't move. So, on this one, I think I'm going to do maybe I'll do a little blue and green on this one and I'm going to do the same type of thing. And I'm just going to come in. I kind of start off Just kind of add some ink all the way around. And then maybe a little bit of my cactus green. Ooh. A dye based ink is going to behave a little differently, it won't be as saturated. You'll have oodles of colors to play with, and most of you have some sort of a dye-based ink or a combination of. Can you use a Tim Holtz ink with a Memento ink with a Lawn Fawn ink with a Hero Arts ink? Absolutely, you're picking the colors that you want. Today I'm playing with stays on, so I'm just using these to kind of take this one. Remember I did two. So now I've done both of these and they're very simple and they're very pretty and you have options then to go in and cut down or trim out or die cut. But I'm going to take this one which is the same here and I'm going to turn it over. This is the embossed side. If I run my fingers across it the ridges are raised. If I flip it over this is the debossed side. So now it creates divots because it's raised here, so it must be pushed down here. Let's see what happens when I add ink to that. Now my flower stays white because that ink is hitting the top of the paper, but this image is now sunk down in because it's raised over here. So that ink can never hit that image because it's too far down. Let's tap in a little bit of our green. And a 
little bit more of our blue. So this one's a little more blue than green. It's the same folder, just done two different ways. Here you've left your, your embossed image white because you're inking the debossed side. Now, if you don't like this, you can flip it over and ink that side. <laughs> and if you do that, this is what you're going to get. And if you don't like this, you can flip it over. You have options. That's the whole point. But sometimes the debossed side is really what you're going for. Maybe that's the side that makes your heart most happy. Let's trim this out. I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it substantially smaller. Just so you can see that even though it's on a slimline embossing folder, it does not have to be slimline size at all. Look at the difference in the size. You can absolutely trim it down to what makes your heart happy. And then I could come back and maybe just ink my edges up. I don't know which one do you like better the good news is you don't have to choose embossed debossed just adding some ink right over the top could have I have turned this one over sure I could have turned this one over and done the same thing let's wipe up See, that's going to take a little bit of alcohol to get up the stain right there. Zoop, and gone. Just like a nice white erase board. So a little bit of red. Just getting it down there, no rhyme, no reason. And we're good to go. And a little bit maybe of the orange, so we have apples to apples. So now I've got the same, but different. Front, back. Sometimes leaving the image white is just as pretty, if not prettier, than doing the whole embossing. So simple ways to use embossing folders, easy coloring, doesn't take a lot of thought. You just kind of go and let it be. You're not looking for perfection. You're just looking for pretty. Okay, now what if you have an embossing folder? Let's pull this one. And this one I'll just maybe do once. So while those embossing folders had a lot of negative space, so the design was very, very simple. Let's try this one. And let's roll it on through. And 
and send it through. Easy peasy roll. Bring it out. And my paper is beautifully, beautifully embossed. Can you see the definition? Now, I can leave this white and it's very elegant, or I could do this in any colored cardstock, but if I want to add some color to it, hmm. Well, let's just keep with the reds, yeah? So I'm gonna take my pad and it doesn't matter whether this be a Tim Holtz ink or a Memento ink or a Lawn Fawn ink, I'm using stays on today. So my color is going to be a little darker, a little more saturated. Okay, so there's a little bit of red. Now you can really see that embossing coming up. Now I don't mind that I got my background with a little bit of red. I like that. I'm not trying to keep it completely clean. I need to have some color back there to get rid of the starkness of that white. Maybe a little bit of orange. Orange is going to add another level of color on it. And that embossing is really starting to come to life. And I might even take a little bit of green. And you're like, green? How are you going to put green in there? You know what? I'm just going to maybe tap just a little bit of green here and there. It's not going to really look green. It's going to maybe darken up my leaves just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just darken up my leaves just a little bit. a little bit and then I can trim it out to whatever I want it to be so if you are a newbie to crafting and you've got yourself a die cutting machine embossing folders are one of the quickest and easiest ways to start they give you an instant gratification, an instant aha moment. You add a little bit of ink to it. It changes the entire look of the, of the paper without much effort. And then you just kind of go in with some color. And kind of have at it. We're not talking about difficult crafting. We're talking about ease of use. And when you're in a rush or you're just learning, this is going to give you an instant and immediate result. Just like these will give you an instant and immediate result where you can accomplish something. Now you map this on a card. You, you maybe back it in
Maybe you back it on black, mat it out, stick it to a card, put a happy birthday there, and you're done. Doesn't have to be any more than that. It can be simple and elegant and beautiful and fast. All right, so those are just using embossing folders, some typical, basic, easy ways <coughs> to use them. Excuse me. Let's move on. Now I'm going to jump ship that hard left turn I told you about. I'm now going to take it. Are you ready? So we're going to put the embossing folders away for a little bit. I'm going to clean off my workspace and I'm going to pull out some foil and some paper. So what if you don't have embossing folders and you want to make something pretty? Well, I brought in some papers to do just that. Okay, looks pretty good there. All right, so I brought in some papers that are beautiful. This one is the mini creative pad from P13. And inside, you've got that alcohol inky, they're double-sided alcohol inky look, a place to stamp images. This pad is so inexpensive. It is under $3. It's a matte size. So I want to say maybe it is a, a four by six, close to that. Yeah, four by six, 24 sheets. It's under $3. I could not believe that it was under $3. So I bought all of them. <laughs> Sight unseen, I said, how bad can it be? And it turned out to be amazing. But I also brought in the Couture Creations Ink Drop Pad in Ocean. So we've had their other ink drop pads. And this one I brought in in Ocean. Now this is a six by six, and it gives you little veins of what would be like a metallic-y, foily looking thing you know, veins of metallic-y foil. They both are beautiful and they both are easy to use. I'm gonna be playing with Couture Creations, his precision glue pin. So not all glues are made the same. That is a true, just like not all double-sided adhesives are made the same. Some glues are more, have less water in them and are much more tacky. Some glues have oodles of water in them and will make your paper warp. It just depends upon the manufacturer and what the glue is intended on doing. So Ozzy Andrew Couture Creations Turbo Pin is a fast drying, strong, super strong glue that goes tacky really, really, really quickly. There is not a lot of water in this glue. Why is that important? Because we're gonna play with these papers and we're gonna play with foils. So this is for those of you who don't die cut, who don't have a die cutting machine, but still wanna make something super pretty. Okay, so I pulled those three out. Let's, let's play with those and see what I come up with. Now, the foil I have here, foil I have here is a heat transfer foil. So it's meant to go with your glimmer machine or your cut, uh, your um, cut and foil machine. It it really your go press and foil machine. It's about 15 feet by five inches and relatively inexpensive. We have a ton of it, and so I'm putting it on sale at like 50% off. I think I think it's down to I think the the retail is 3.99 and it's down to two dollars a roll because. Well, we gotta make room for the next warehouse sale. So I've got oodles of foil that we're gonna put on sale. And again, about 50, I think it's 50% off. And how do you use this if you don't have a foiling machine? So simple, really so simple. Um, how about I start with, how about I do this one? So I've got my Couture Creations ink drop paper in the ocean, and I've got my pen. The pen, I'm gonna tell you, when you get it, if it's not coming out, you open it up and there's this little, this little piece of paper 
all the way in the front. You almost, all the way down below, you almost have to scoop it out. It's this little piece of paper that has a little X in it and it's supposed to open and close really nicely so your glue flows through it, not so much. So if you're having trouble getting your glue out, dig that little piece of paper out. And then it's got these two little places where you would push to send the glue out so it doesn't just gush. And this is not a gushy glue. Now I'm gonna just put, it's got a super fine tip so I can kind of draw with it. And I'm just gonna follow some of the lines that Craft Consortium has put on their paper. Where their veining is for what would be a metallic. So I just followed some of their lines. And then I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna kind of smudge my glue. I'm a girl who wants to go, 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 and I don't wanna give it too much time to dry. This isn't a dry, uh, glue that you let go tacky. If you let this glue go tacky, it'll be dry and you won't be able to stick anything to it. So I just wanna smoosh, smoosh, smoosh. And then I'm gonna take some of my foil Ooh, I'm gonna cut off a hunk. And you can use any color foil you want. Can you use Thermoweb foil? Absolutely, it will do the same thing. Thermoweb foil costs a lot more though, so you may wanna save that for another application. And then I'm just gonna kinda of put it down and peel it up. Ooh, it's that fast. Now, if you're using another glue, you may need to let it go tacky. It may need to dry a little bit before it's able to do this, or it might not be able to pull this up at all. Some glues are not strong enough. Their adhesive is not strong enough to grab the foil and lift it. So Ozzy Andrews Turbo Pin is $3.90, $3.89, we're doing them for $2.50. So it's a great little pin. It will glue anything down. Really lovely little pin. So I just put it down, pull it up. Any place that I've got some glue, it's stuck. And it really does change the appearance. But I wanna do more than that. I wanna add a secondary color. Can I do that? Sure, I just come back in. Anybody see what I did with my little? No, no, no. I'm asking about my little tab. Oh, I'll just put a new one down. All right, oh, so these are, these are uh, storage tabs for your foil. They're kinda of like a posty note. They're no longer made. He no longer makes them. I think I have maybe 50 sets left. If they're just like, if you go to the Staples or, or Office Max, they're just like the little posty note tabs, but we have them, we'll have them on sale. But when they're gone, they're gone. So if I wanna add another color of foil, I just come back through and I can just kinda add a little more glue where I want it. And you know, I don't really think about it too much. I'm not a big thinker. I'm a more of a doer. <laughs> Sometimes I really should stop and think before I do, but that's a whole nother story. I just want, I'm kind of going along the same lines. And then again, I like to take my finger and just kind of, just kind of smush my glue. Now you can do a fine detail line, absolutely. And for that, you will need to let your glue get a little tacky if it's a full line. What color do we want to add? 
green. Why not? There's no green on here. Let's add a little green. Okay, so here's my tab. I'm going to put it there so I don't lose it. So if you've got oodles and oodles of foil and you're not using it, this is a great way to utilize it. It doesn't have to be this paper. It can be any paper. You can add foil to any of your papers as long as you've got the right glue. You could go in there and you could draw a little heart. You could take little embellishments on your paper if you've got flowers and you could add a little bit of glue to your flowers and then add foil. That makes it specialty paper. And specialty paper can be up to 2 225 a sheet if it's got foil. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And all I'm doing is pressing and pulling. I'm not sending it through my Big Shot machine. A little press. And then anywhere that glue is ready, it's sticking down. And I just keep using the same sheet until no more sticks. Now what do you do with this? I have no idea, but it's beautiful. It really just changes the whole look of the paper. It adds to it. You can then you can then die cut with it. You can layer on top of it. I, I mean tags and flowers and and I, I don't even know. It's just a beautiful sheet of paper. And it was very easy to do. Super, super, super simple. So if I came back. Remember, I kind of went along the lines. I added my glue kind of along the lines of where they put, where they thought the, the metallic would go. And that's what these lines are kind of meant to mimic. The veining here is kind of meant to mimic as if there's a, a metallic running through it. So why not, why not add the metallic? The foil is inexpensive enough. The glue is inexpensive enough. And it changes your paper. From just a piece of cardstock into a specialty piece. Now I could let those lines go and keep their dimension and not smush them and then foil over the top of them and it would foil in that very precise area. I'm looking for a little smush. So maybe we try this one with some gold. And this is kind of a matte gold, not a high shine gold. And can I do it with this paper as well? Sure, let's grab a sheet of this. Hmm. Trying to see what paper I have in front of me that I like. Let's pull this one. And maybe this one. Bam. Look at that. Nothing? Wow. -o. 
And by following their lines, <laughs> they already decided where they thought it would look best. <laughs> Why reinvent the wheel? <laughs> it's kind of like when you're coloring and the stamp set that you have has got the, on the packaging, it shows you where the, the kind of the shading should be, where the shadows should be. Why, why try and reinvent the wheel? Just copy what they've already done. <laughs> they, they said, yeah, it would look really great here if you put the, the shadows of the stamp here and color it this way. I'm, I'm an absolute um, <laughs> scrap lifter when, when somebody else has already done it and it looks fabulous. I will do it in my own colors, but I'm absolutely going to borrow from them. I look at packaging all the time to give me clues on how I'm supposed to color something. It's probably where I, well, that is where I scrap lift the most is from the packaging from the manufacturer. They put a lot of time and a lot of money in designing that packaging. So if they're going to tell me how to color it, I'm going to listen. How easy that is. And then maybe we take, hmm. When did I use here? No, 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 here. I used the green here, right? Ooh, what if we use this? This looks pretty. And cut. So again, this has nothing to do with embossing folders at all. But it will. <laughs> and again, I'm just going to kind of follow some of the same lines. So I just kind of followed some of the same lines again. And then a little bit of a smoosh. So now it's smooshed and then start putting it down. That's the beauty of the turbo pin. The glue is fast and it's strong and it will hold. Not all glue will do this. And I just keep going around and around until I've used it all and I don't feel any more sticky. I think I might be there. It's beautiful and easy to do ink drop paper from Couture Creations. It just lends itself to this so nicely. But let's try, let's see if I worry about the red, that it's gonna be too red. So maybe I'll put some gold down and then a little red on top of it. So maybe, I don't know, what do you think? I don't know. You know, all we can do is try. So this one doesn't really have they haven't put in any place for like a metallic. This is just kind of an ink drop look without that metallic. So I'm just gonna come in and follow some of the lines because again, the manufacturer decided this is where they should go. This is how the paper should look. So I'm just gonna take from there 
their reference from their expertise and kind of make my own and just kind of follow some of the lines a little bit in the areas and then a little smudge all right and then what color did you think we should go with i worry about the red being too red hmm hmm hmm, hmm. Well, let's try just a little bit of bright gold. A little bit of bright gold. We'll put that down and then we'll put a little bit of red on top of it and see what we get. A little bit of smush. Okay, let's see what we get. Oh, that's fabulous and fast. <laughs> that's my kind of crafting. I'll just do a little bit, just a little bit with some red. Not a lot, just to add a little highlight. And again, I'm following kind of the same lines in the gold. Okay, I think that's enough. Just a little bit, because I don't want to lose all my gold. I want a little bit of red here and there, just a pop. Which one? Okay, maybe that'd be too much, but maybe it would. Okay, just, it's only paper. Let's just do it. Oh, I didn't smush. Little piece. And away we go. and it just starts to pop. It's very cool. It really is. And if you don't have a, a die cutting machine, but you wanna make beautiful foiled things, well, here you go. $2 roll of foil, which gives you 15 feet of foil by five, and a $2.50 glue pin. So the glue pins come from Australia. I'm going to tell you, we only have so many of the glue pins. I can only ship in so many. I can only afford to get that many here. The foils are already here. The foils I have, and frankly, I need to I need to send some of them on their way because we have another we have product coming in. So foils are here. Glue pins are are here too. But I could I could only these were these have been here for a while. These I could only bring in so many. I could only afford so many. So if you love, love, love the glue pin, you might want to pick up a few. The foils, the foils are here. When they're gone, they're gone. We'll bring foil back. Just not in such a, we don't need to have so many here at the shop. So it's an inventory reduction sale. <laughs> but look at how beautiful it is. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Because now we've played with foils and glue. We've played with 
embossing folders and ink. Yeah, now we need to kind of tie it all together. So this time I'm going to play with the embossing folders and foil. Let me put these here. And maybe I will bring over, maybe I'll bring over this one. Hmm. Or this one. Do I want to use this one again? Hmm. I don't know. Let's see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? Okay. So the worst that can happen is it's only paper. All right, so I'm going to take, and you can see that the classes are not scripted, they're not edited, they are what they are, and I kind of do it as I go along. This is Stacy tape. This is a five inch roll of Stacy tape. This is double sided adhesive. That means when I peel this back, there is sticky right there, right now. It is, I don't know, like 85 feet in length, it is five inches. We sell it all the way up to six inches, but we sell it as small as, I think this is a quarter inch, we sell it as small as an eighth of an inch. And it all comes off the same roll. There's like an eight foot roll of this, and it goes through a machine that cuts it to the right, to the right thickness. It, the machine just automatically, you know, cuts it to the right thickness. So we go eighth of an inch all the way up to six inches. This is a super strong tape, and I can't, I can't stress enough that not all double-sided tapes are the same. They just are not. The, the three tapes that I am comfortable in recommending, Scorpel, that would be Sukwang tape, and it says Sukwang, Sukwang, Sukwang in blue all the way across the liner. Scorpel doesn't, doesn't make the tape. They buy the tape but from Sukwang, and it is an amazing tape, and that was the tape that we originally started with. Elizabeth Crafts makes an excellent double-sided tape. They really do. Ells does a beautiful job in it and, and I can confidently say that their quality is one that I would buy. Just like Sukwang. And then there's our tape. Our tape is a little bit stronger than both of those, a little bit longer. All of them are heat resistant, which means you can emboss on top of them, throw embossing powder right on top of the tape. But other than that, like, like I love Ozzy Andrew. I love Couture Creations. His double-sided tape is not the same. It's okay if you're doing just simple crafts and paper and things like that, but it is not the same strength. It is not the same as mine or Elsa's or Score Pals. It, it looks the same. They're packaged the same, but it is not. That doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that it's meant for different things. If you're buying double-sided adhesive, you you want to buy the best you can get for what the what job you're doing and again if you are taking couture creations double-sided tape and you're adding it to paper and you're die cutting and making a sticker out of it perfect but for things like what i'm going to do i just don't think so several manufacturers out there just they have a nice product but it it's not meant to do everything so keep that in mind when you're out there shopping, especially from like the dollar stores. It's just not the same. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna add it, I'm gonna add it to some paper. So I'm gonna go across my paper and you can tear this tape. See, look at, you don't have to have uh, scissors to cut it. It is not like a red line where you have to have scissors to cut it, but will it hold your book bindings? Yes. <laughs> will it hold um, metal and plastic and glass and fabric? Y yes. We have lots of customers who get a couple sizes like this and then all of a sudden it goes missing. It's because their husbands have taken it and put it in their toolbox because it holds everything. It works so well. So now I've put this down and you can see I've got a little, a little ripple in it. I'm going to be fine with that. That's not going to cause me any grief at all. 
And what am I going to do with this tape? Well, this tape is going to act just like the glue did. So when I put my when I put my glue onto my paper, I added adhesive so that it would hold the foil. My tape is going to hold the foil as well. I'm not sure that I'm going to like what I'm, well, I just don't know. All we can do is try, right? That's all we can do. So once it's down, I'm going to peel off the top. And that's going to expose my sticky. Now it's sticky right now. I've got to do something with it. And I don't throw the liner away. I keep these because these make amazing masks. You can die cut with this and then put it down on the liner and glitter all around it. It's just fabulous. I've got lots of classes on that. But this is the one thing that won't stick to the sticky. I've left myself little handles on either side so I can pick it up. But if you forget to do that, remember your liner can be used to help to lift it up if you need to lift it up so always keep some of the liner around you never want to get rid of all of it i just don't know if i'm gonna like this but you know what like i said no guts no glory all we can do is try i'm gonna take some of my my foil cut it off And let's see what I get. <gasps> ah, Stacy! Ah! <laughs> well, that's a boo-hoo. I told you it was sticky. <laughs> oh well. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna start again. We're just gonna do it. <laughs> I will figure it out. Give a good press. <laughs> Give a good burnish. And you can almost see the foil coming away <laughs> from the liner. Because there's a clear plastic liner that's holding that color down. Just a nice burnish. And then let's peel up. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Well, we're just going to go. No guts, no glory. Okay, so I've got a big mess in the center. And it's not perfectly foiled everywhere. There's little pieces where there's white poking through. I'm going to grab some more red. Well, now you really know that they're not edited. <laughs> See my mistakes, and that way, if you make it, you know you can fix it, or you learn not to make it. All right, so I've got a big area of white right there. This is adhesive. Put it down. Press. Pull up. Put it down, <laughs> press, pull up. Now I'm not gonna try and cover up every little area that is white, that did not get any foil. I'm not gonna worry about it. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna put some down where I see a big opening. Oh, my liner didn't come off there. Come on. Oh yeah, my liner's stuck. Right in that little corner. Come on, little liner. There we go. Off you go. My clear plastic hadn't come off. It did now. So don't get your stuck. That's okay. I'm just going to go in there and fix it. Fix, fix, fix. Any place that doesn't have some red, I'm just going to add it. 
I'm just using my finger to poke it in place. And it still has lots of areas that are not completely covered. Like here, I'm, I, I didn't get any foil there. All I have to do is take, press up, press up. I think that's pretty good. I think I'm gonna be happy with this. And you're like, but it's not all covered. I know. Okay, so I'm gonna put that one aside. I'm going to use it, but I'm gonna do another one just super fast so you can see. Hopefully I don't make the same mistake twice, but you just never know, do you? Let's see if I make the same mistake twice. So cut off a piece of paper. Tape. A little longer than I needed but that's okay cut off the back and be done cut off the back I'll use a different color that way we can use this one on something else off the back let's use a different color how about we use ooh this is pretty right so let's expose my foil and lay it down. Aw, see how nice that was. <laughs> but I didn't give up on this and we're going to use this one first actually because we'll see what happens. Press, press, press. Give a good burnish. It's all about the burnishing. Can you take a brayer? You could. Your fingers work better. A brayer doesn't really get down hard enough. Do you have to rub for hours? No. Just give it a nice burnish. And then up. Well, happy day. Look at there. <laughs> But I said I'm gonna use this one, and I am, because this one's got a little ripple, and it's got some white space. I'm gonna take this embossing folder. This is the one that we did this with. I'm gonna take this embossing folder. And I'm going to send it on through. Trim down my edges because it's going to be just a little bit too wide to get through my machine. Bring my machine on over. Remember, I need to use my base platform and my solo shim with my Nelly Studios 3D embossing folders. Send it on through. I found my little tab. Now, by sending it through, it took what was a high gloss finish on my foil and it matted it. Let's just take a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Just so you can see the difference. And let's grab that red. 
just so I can show you the difference. Okay, so here's the foil. I've got my tape down. Okay, not perfect, but all I want to do is show you the difference in the color of the foil. A little bit of a burnish. And it doesn't have to see how it looks like it's separated there, but it hasn't separated there. Don't worry about it doesn't have to look like it's completely separated in every area. There. Okay, see how gloss that is? By sending it through my Big Shot machine, I've satined it. It now no longer has that gloss to it. It has more of a satiny look to it. You can see the embossing, but you can also see all the little cracks and crevices and mistakes that I made. All right, we're gonna take care of that. So I'm gonna grab some stays on, and the reason I'm grabbing stays on is because this is now a plastic on top of my paper. This is now non-porous. If I put a Dewdrop or a Hero Arts or a Tim Holtz on top of this, a distress it's going to wipe right off because this is a plastic yes stays on can be used on paper absolutely but where it's meant to mostly go where where it's really what it was designed for is to use on surfaces that are non-porous so maybe I'll grab my dark red And I'm just wiping it right across. To bring out that embossing. Maybe I go a little darker. Do I dare use my black? I don't know. Maybe I use my spiced chai. Maybe that's a little darker, but not totally black. Ooh. Ooh, that's very pretty. I like that. And just maybe a touch. Nope, didn't like the black. I'm going to go back with my spice chai. The beautiful thing is you can go right back over the top of it and make it all better again. Just like if you're a blending an alcohol ink marker. Okay, so I think I'm okay with that. Now I've got a little here and a little over there. I can carefully, if I want to get rid of that, Take a wet wipey and a little bit of hand sanitizer or alcohol and gently get rid of it and use it as an eraser. Gently I can go in there and pull that off.
But now I need to take some glitter. Do I want to trim it out first? No, let's just do some glitter. So it is still tacky. My ink is still tacky. I've got some places where the paper, where my foil did not hit. I'm going to take some glitter. I'm going to make a bigger piece. And I'm going to drop some glitter right over the top. And I'm going to let it kind of walk itself on down. You're saying that's a lot of glitter. I know. But we're going to brush it right off. Oh, my ink was really wet. Look at that, it's stuck to all of my ink. So my stays on was super wet still, probably because I put the red and the brown and the black. And so my glitter stuck to all of it. While that stays on is wet, Oh yeah, it stuck to all of it. It covered up my whole thing. Oh, but that doesn't look so bad. <laughs> Aww, covered up all my ink. My ink was still, was very tacky. We'll have to try it again and let my ink not be so tacky or not put as much down. Now let's cut away the noise. But that glitter filled in all those spaces. Wherever that paper... No, too much glitter. It's a lot of glitter. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And it's stuck. There's no getting it off now. Huh, no getting it off now. Okay, let's try again. Let's take the other one that I did. Here. And let's try it with maybe this one here. And let's put that in there. Ooh. And I'll just trim a little bit off so it will go through my machine. Now you may love glitter. Mary Lynn would be going, oh, that's amazing. For me, it's a little too much glitter. Hmm. Nope. <laughs> but I gave it a college try. Let's send this one through. <laughs> nope. And roll, 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 roll. Oof. Look at how beautiful is that? 
I mean, that's beautiful just on its own. That's beautiful. Wow. That's a little bit of happiness right there. But let's go ahead and let's ink it. What should we ink it with? Maybe a little bit of the blue, the same uh, blue. I just put a little bit of blue on it. You almost can't see it. So maybe I come in with a little darker blue. That you can see much better. And then a little green on the bottom, maybe. how pretty that is. Now that ink is a little wet. Yep, a little wet. While I'm going to give it a second to dry, I'm going to get another sheet of paper. Put some Stacy tape down and get another one ready to go. Oh, that was way too much, but that's okay. Trim off my back. And do one more just so I have it ready to go while I'm giving that ink just a little time to dry so I don't want I don't want glitter over the whole thing like happened last time now if you don't want to tear your tape you can absolutely just take a pair of scissors and do a little score line right down is that enough probably too much but that's okay Little score line. Zoop. And it'll just tear right on that little score line that you did. Oh, I don't know if it's going to be long enough. Hmm. I'll save that for, well, I'll save that for later. Let's grab another piece and make sure it's long enough this time. Ready? So I'm not going to get rid of that tape. That tape is good. A little score line. Whoop. Tear right on the score line. I still don't think it's long enough. see what happens trim okay so those two are ready to go let's bring this one back what color glitter should we do should we do the blue should we do the purple should we do the green should we do the silver? <laughs> I don't know.
Okay, I glittered. Take my little brush. Ha! And where the ink was still wet, and where the paper still had some adhesive, my glitter cling to. It's not, it's not like this. This was way glittered. This is subtle. This is a wink. It's so pretty. Let me put this back where it belongs. It's just a wink of glitter. Let's cut away all the noise. And let's see if you can see it. So pretty. With just a touch, a touch of glitter smiling at you. Just a touch. But what if you're not crazy about the, the blue on the background? Can we get rid of that? Sure. Well, close enough is good. Uh, enough is as good as a feast. So we're going to go with this. It's close enough in size. I'm going to do this one again. Only this time I'm going to use like a silver. So I'm still going to foil it. Expose my sticky. I can hear the SMS peeps are just getting here. Lights are going to turn on soon. Expose my sticky. I've cut my foil. I'm going to kind of drop my foil down on my sticky, give a nice press. I'm not going to worry about the little bubbles and if it's not exactly right. Put my little label back on my foil. Okay, so I want you to remember this. In fact, I'm going to take this one. Oh, I don't want to cut that one. Oh, I'm going to take this one. Because I want you to see the difference. The difference is important. Because you may be looking at that going, holy smokes, artichokes. Oops, left some of it behind. I'm just going to cover this up with that exact same foil so you can see the before and the after when I run it through my Big Shot machine. And does it have to be a Big Shot machine? No. What machine do you have? Will it take 3D embossing folders? If it does, you're just going to have to play with the shims because there is no standardized size in 3D embossing folders. Gosh, I wish there were. <laughs> but then every machine is different too. So I guess it doesn't really make a difference. You're just going to have to see which shims are going to work to make it happen. And of course, if you've got that universal plate from Spellbinders, wow. They, I mean, that just makes things a whole lot easier. They give you, I want to say there's like eight different shims with it. So there's no way you're not going to get something through. That is for sure. 
Okay, so let's just put this down, drop. This is just so you can see the difference when I'm done rolling it through. Just make sure it's down. And then peel up. Okay, wow, right? That's a lot happening there. So I'm gonna keep that handy, and that way when I'm done, I can show you the difference. So I wanna make sure, yep, that's the right side. short but that's okay I've got it in bring over my machine we're gonna just roll it on through easy peasy Okay, world of difference. It started as this, but after we finished, we rolled it through, it ended like that, right? Would you ever think it's still got that holographic kind of look to it? but it's not as wow, this is wow, hello, pay attention to me. I'm crossing traffic and you cannot miss me. And this is like, I'm just gonna kind of slide into the room and I'm gonna look elegant and beautiful and everybody's gonna notice me, but nobody's gonna notice me because I'm not trying to be noticed, but I'm noticeable. <laughs> I'm not trying to be noticed, but I'm definitely noticeable. <laughs> Big difference between the two. Wow. Okay, now what to do with it? Well, I could bring my inks over and we could go over the top of it. Absolutely. Um, what if I brought over... What if I brought over a marker? Hmm... Alcohol ink markers. Um, alcohol ink markers meet alcohol ink pad. <laughs> what if I, what if I smudged a little bit? I just went in there and I smudged. So I want to be, ooh, I want to be precise where I put my color. What if I just smudge a little bit? Your finger is your best tool. Ooh, look at how pretty is this. I just smudge it. That works. So what if I add my color by just smudging? Smudging, what if I take some blue? What's a pretty blue? Is this a pretty blue? I don't know. Oh, maybe this is a better blue. Let's see. Oh, that's a pretty blue.
So this time I'm not taking my ink and going all the way across. I'm kind of adding my color where I want it. I can blend my blues and my purples. I'm just taking my finger to do that. Just gonna smudge. See how easy that is? Put a little down, move it along. Is your finger gonna get dirty? Yes. Can you wear a glove? Yes. Would I do this with a dauber? Probably not. I don't think I would have nearly the control that I do. My finger, I can get right on that edge. The dauber's a little bit bigger. If I add some of that purple back in. How pretty. And what if I took some of my green and at the bottom I went all the way across? pretty is that. Take a little bit of my darker green. I wanted to add just a little bit of highlight. Have some mid-tone and some shadow on my green. And then, oh, I got purple there. Let's go back in with a little bit of my blue. And kind of smoosh that. Smush, smush, smush. Amazing what you can do with a finger in crafting. It's your most affordable tool. And those colors, because they're alcohol, they just kind of blend into each other. And I'm missing these two little leaves. There's two little leaves, one right there and one over here. So I'm just going to grab a green marker. And add some color. Yeah, I think that's good. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Do we do any of the background? I don't know. Um, do we do any of the background? And uh, maybe a super light blue? I'm trying to get some of the ink off my fingers. Do we take like a light blue and come in here? It's 
alcohol marker, but I'm certainly not using it in a traditional way. And Ozzy Andrews alcohol markers are $1.99. Really, $1.99. Now, did I go too far? Should I have not done the blue? Too far, should have not done the blue. Suppose if you really don't like it, you grab that wet wipey Put a little bit of, now just a little bit. You don't want to do, you don't want to do too much and you don't want to rub too hard. And just pick some of it up. Oh. Well, pick some of it up. Okay. Now it has a super faint blue background. And then, do I want to add some glitter? I want to do the purple. it dried too fast. Yeah, it looks like it dried too fast. So what if I take that green again? And do just a little green on the bottom. And this time we'll do a little green on the bottom and maybe the green will stay long enough for me to get some green on the bottom. I just put a little more stays on down. And I was get, able to get it wet long enough and stays on is tacky. It's sticky. So if you use stays on, you know that it it kind of when you when you stamp with it on plastic or metal and you stamp it kind of like sticks and you kind of have to peel off your block a little bit oh my gosh that's so pretty so here's where we are and then let's cut away all the noise
little bit of glitter. Do you see it twinkling down there? See, instead of being, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, hello. Nice to meet you, I'm here, pay attention to me. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna walk in the room and everybody's gonna look at me because I'm amazing. <laughs> but not, not, I'm here, I'm noticeable. Isn't that beautiful? All done with some foil, some double stick tape and some alcohol. Alcohol ink pads, alcohol markers. Let's um let's do let's do okay, let's clean for just a second and let's do one more. Let's do this one. And I think I'm gonna use that same foil. So another piece of white paper. do two more. I'm going to do a bright gold one. Maybe I'll do that one first. And I'm going to go back to that. I'm going to go back to this folder. I'm going to go back to this one one more time because I didn't like, I didn't like how the red one came out. So let's wash, rinse, and repeat. Let's try again. So I'm going to do two. So let me get some Stacy tape on this one. Plenty long. Trim off the back, my extra. You would probably be better at not having so much extra. Okay, and let's put some Stacy tape on this one. shiny gold down on this one. Expose my sticky. It's sticky right now. Grab my gold. Oh, and that's the last of it. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, well it's long enough. Woo! Let's not just, let's hope I don't drop it. And let's just kind of put it down. Got some little wobblies going on in there. I don't care. Just gonna press them down some air bubbles. I'm just going to press them down. And let's peel. Okay, that one's good. Let's do this one while I'm sitting right here. Let's take off my backing. my foil. You could make these and just hold on to them until you decide to do something with them. Oh, I cut a lot of foil. Drop. Press down. 
kind of press where the little air bubbles are, even if they don't work their way out. You're not supposed to. You just want to get a good press. And pull up. All right, let's start with this one. Start with the gold. And I'm going to go back to this folder. And I'm going to send it on through. Cut off some of the excess so it goes through my machine, okay? Bring my machine over. My embossing folder straight onto my solo shim, which is straight onto my platform. I'm not using two plates, I'm using only one because that's what goes through a Sizzix Big Shot machine, a Big Kick machine, a Fabby machine, a Plus machine, a Switch machine. This will probably be the sandwich for all of it. Okay. And again, look at the difference. You've got that bright, shiny gold there, but when you run it through into the machine, look at how beautiful it is. Look at that. All right, and this time I am gonna take my red and I'm gonna run a little red across. And I might run a little orange across. And while I can, I'm going to get a little cloth and pull out some of that extra that I got on there. A little bit of hand sanitizer or alcohol, a little baby wipe, a little spritz. Not a heavy hand. And I'm just going to wipe some of it off. Not a heavy hand. Okay, so that's where I am. Now I want to add a little bit maybe of some yellow in here. So I've got my pen and I want a piece of paper here just to wipe off my marker. So this is my yellow and I'm going to just smudge, smudge. I know it's a very technical term, but I just want to add some yellows to the centers. And look at how that changes it. If I want to add some more red, I just grab my red. And I can come in, add a little more red if I want, and I can smudge. But I don't think I want any more red. I think it might be good. And then how about some green? Okay, green.
green on my leaves. Maybe some green up here, some green up here, some green up here. Maybe my stem a little bit. Maybe a little more yellow on some of these. And I don't even think I'm going to smudge these. I think I'm just going to color them. Just add a little yellow in there. This is becoming a little yellow up here too. Look at how pretty that's becoming. It's so simple. And look at the difference, the mirror gold. It's almost like a mirror versus sending it through the Big Shot machine mats it. Now, I don't know if it's still wet sticky enough. All we can do is try. And I'll try with the gold. And we'll see what we get. So I'm starting at the top, putting a layer across the entire top, and then letting it just kind of walk its way on down, and letting gravity do the work. If I missed a spot, like I missed a little bit over here, I just throw a little bit across and then let gravity do its job. Tap, 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 and brush, brush, brush. And wherever that exposed white paper was that has the sticky underneath it because the foil didn't stick to it, my glitter is going to stick to it. And if any of my ink is wet, oh. It's so easy. And there's really no coloring involved. I smush, smush, smushed. Put all my glitter back. So when I was playing, Mr. SMS was in here. And every time I pulled the, he would pull a, you know, he'd, he'd kind of, cause this is his office and he would come up and sit by me and watch what I'm doing. And then I would pull the glitter out and he'd almost leave the room. <laughs> okay. So I do think I'm going to do that last one because I have it. So once the glitter's there, the glitter's there. It's not going to come off. It's not going to flake off because it's that tape. It's my Stacy tape that's holding it in place or the wetness from the ink, which is tacky, which acts as a glue. What do you think? I love these. I think they're so easy to do and so pretty. And if you have that foil, use it. Now you've got a new way to use it. Do you have Sharpies or Bix or do you have Ozzy Andrews $1.99 pens? Or maybe you really are just about embossing. Maybe you are, this is where you need to start. Just sending it through 
and embossing, but maybe you don't have a machine and you want to use foils. Well, let's make your own paper. That looks good. <laughs> Options are a plenty, but I do want to do that one last one. This one, this one, I, I don't know. I might finish it and see if I can salvage it, but we'll see. I usually want to finish everything, and then if I don't like it, then I can throw it away. I rarely throw anything away. Usually I'm like, huh, that didn't come out half bad. Okay, so I've got this one, and I'm going to grab this last folder here. And I'm going to lay it in, and we're going to send it through. Now, I didn't use all the folders that we have. And again, these are from Nellie's Choice. And for 3D embossing folders, holy smokes, artichokes, are they inexpensive. Wow. And send it on through. Now, can you roll it on back? Sure, if you want to. Do you have to? No, but if you want to, you can. So I'm at the end, and then I can just send it right on back if it makes my heart happy. It's not going to hurt. And again, look at the difference between the bottom and what I've created. And this one, I'm going to keep it super easy. I'm just going to go over the whole thing with my green. I'm just going to go green, green, green. And I might even do a little bit of darker green. like this. Look at how pretty is this. And then let's add some centers to our flowers. Let's do If I don't like it, I can always change it, right? I'm just putting some centers in. I'm putting a little bit of a little bit of purple in the center and then smudging it around. what I'm doing in the pink. Add some pink in there. And this one I'll just do in the pink. And I'll add some pink in here. And a little pink in here. And I'm just smushing. Where else do I have a flower? Where else do I have a flower? And it just pops. 
and come back with a little more green if I want. Get a little more green in there. And let's go ahead and we'll put maybe some green over the top and see what happens or should we do silver? Silver or green? Ooh, or pink. Hmm. I went with pink. I'm going to put a line across the top. And then I'm going to let it walk on down. Tap, tap, tap. Anywhere I missed, I'm just going to add a little bit and let gravity do the work. Tap, tap, tap. Take my brush mop it off oh my gosh and you have just little little hints of glitter and then all of this goes back into my jar you use so little Oh, this is just going to go right back into my jar. Okay. So his floor is rather glittery. But look at how pretty. And then I just trim it out. So simple. Two sided tape, embossing folders, foil, alcohol ink, or stays on ink pads, or I think archival ink pads would work as well. I wouldn't use Copics, I would definitely get Ozzy Andrews $1.99 pens. They will not be part of the YouTube yummies because we want to be able to expedite orders out and that will take too long for us to pull. You know, I will do, I'll do the 108 colors. That's what I'll do. If you want all hundred and no, it's now 120 colors. If you want all 120 colors of Ozzy Andrews alcohol markers, I'll put those in the, I want it all, but I can't do the individual. It will just take us too long to pull downstairs. That will have to be an upstairs order. What do you think? You can do this. Really, you can. What did I do with my other one? Where'd it go? Uh, we have that one. And we have that one. And we have that one. And then you can chop these up. One of the samples that I showed you, we took and we chopped up. It's this one right here. But we chopped it up, right? So, we started super simple. We started with just using embossing folders, 3D embossing folders, and how you can use the front side and the back side for two totally different looks. 
you can on these you have an opportunity to change the size of your image I mean well on all of them actually you can cut them on down but look at the difference between the two just by turning them over all I did was flip it over same white paper all I did was flip them over and do the back sides love these simple effective die cut them out of ovals without any problem or rectangles I just use stays on to quick color you can use any dye based ink absolutely then we moved on to paper and I showed you how to use Ozzy Andrews uh, turbo glue how quickly it let you lay it down and add your foil because this paper started like this which is pretty but wow man this is amazing and I even did it with the little one and I actually I really like the red I did the red and I'm really digging on the red I think that looks really amazing specialty paper hunky dory type paper <laughs> And then we moved on to playing with the foils and using some Stacy tape and using foil on the Stacy tape and alcohol. How to take those embossing folders and make them something more than what they were. These are definitely more than what they started out as. It's all about options and playing. And when you have one tool, one tool that will do this and will do this and will do this and will do this. That's a pretty cool tool and more because there's more techniques to embossing folders. So what's on sale this week? Well, I've got the two pads are on sale. The Creative Mini is under three bucks. And then the craft consortium is a little bit more. We are limited. We bought what we could get our hands on and when they're gone, they're gone. Then I have oodles and oodles. I've got four by six embossing folders. I've got a, um, the slimline embossing folders all from Nellie's choice. And I've got oodles of them. There is no I want it all because I wasn't able to get the same amount in every embossing folder. So I wasn't able to do an I want it all. But the samples are gorgeous. So the Turbo Glue will be on sale. Stacy Tape is always part of the YouTube Yummies. Stays on. We'll do the stays on. We haven't done stays on on sale in a long time. So we'll do the stays on. I'm only going to do the middies. There's 12 colors. I like the midi size better. They have a full size stays on, but it's like 10 bucks. And the middies work beautifully. Love them. So we'll do the middies. And there'll be an I want it all and open stock, I think. Or maybe just open stock. I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get downstairs. <laughs> but we'll do those. We'll do the I want it all on the 108 markers if you want. I'm not going to do the glitter because, well, the glitter you probably have. And the foils will be on sale. And they'll be 50% off. And there's probably 50 different colors that you can choose from. And all we're doing is an inventory reduction. So... I plan on having foils and using foils. I just need to make space for other things that are coming in. Just got to make space. All right, you guys, let's go to samples. Okay, so I showed you this one in the beginning. And I worked with that one today. And I showed you this one in the beginning. And this one. But now, let me show you these. Okay. This is this is this the rainbow foil <laughs> with 
the background there's a with this stencil right here or a embossing folder right here there's the design it's just on the foil and then glitter thrown down in and once the glitter's down it's down isn't that darling super cute and such a contrast to something like this and here this is the a6 embossing folder again foiled background inked distressed glittered and here's one similar to the one i did all done up here's the background again we've thrown some butterflies on it we've got glitter on top of it we've got stays on we've got foil the background of this is a gold foil and then look at the color on this I don't even know if my camera will pick that color up. It is this royal deep, deep purple that has a ro part of a rose. It's the top. Yeah, it's it's this embossing folder. Only just a portion of it, just a portion of it. That's the nice thing about the slim lines is that you can cut them up. And then it's got this blue over the top and a little bit of black and some glitter. Wow, this thing is in person. If you get a chance to see this one in the store, it is amazing. Look how pretty are they? And they're different. They add a new element to your crafting. They add a little something that maybe your, your family and friends haven't seen before. Look at this one. Isn't that so pretty? That's foil. Foil and the embossing folder and some ink and some glitter. Look at how pretty is this. And again, foil as your background, some ink. They fussy cut out some die cuts. Oh, and this one's beautiful. These are beautiful with the little bit of touches of purple glitter on the flowers. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. And here you have another with the tropical leaves. A little bit of glitter. And I, this is also I, this is also a, a an A6 I think folder, so this is the size about the size of the folder, with all the foliage. And then they fussy cut out the hummingbird, and you've got it on a matte gold foil, and then some stays on, just brushed over it, a little bit of glitter on it. Oh, look at that. I mean, what a dramatic difference. These are the same, but because of the foil that you used and the color that you used, they look dramatically different. And that's a good thing. That means you have options. And here. And another one done in that beautiful purple. Wow, that's gorgeous. I don't know if my camera picks up the prettiness or not. I don't know what color you see. I just know in person, it is drop dead amazing. And then a background, look at that. Foil. Glit uh, foil ink glitter and the glitter has held to they must have used a they must have used the blue and then the glitter held to all the ink 
and then we do have a with sympathy embossing folder so the with sympathy is a peel off but the folder has the little cross it's just a very sweet nice with sympathy or maybe a first communion or a wedding but it does have the cross And then another one using the rainbow. And this time they just took black and smudged black all over it. And last but not least, I did this one as a sample when I was playing to see if I liked, if I could get it to do what I wanted it to do. And if it did do what I wanted it to do, did I like it? So this one is mine. And then I do have a layout for you where Claire has taken and used the foil and then she fussy cut out the embossing folder. And we've got it up here from the embossing folder. And she just made a really sweet, simple, easy layout using embossing folders. All right, you guys, let me tilt on up and say it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Where are you going to get all this product? Well, I'm hoping that if you don't have glitter, you go to your local store and buy glitter. If you have a local store, visit them. It can be ultra fine, micro fine. It can be any, basically any glitter you've got, use it. If you need the stays on ink, I'm hoping that your local crafting store also has the stays on ink and you can get it from them. Support them. We appreciate you. Truly we do. I, I'm not trying to send you away. I'm trying to, I'm trying to sprinkle a little bit of goodness here and a little bit of goodness there so that all of us mom and pop shops can stay in business. Yes, there are things, the foil. You're not gonna get the foil at a better price than here, so get the foil from us. The Turbo Glue. Yes, we're gonna have the best price on the Turbo Glue, absolutely. The Nelly's Choice embossing folders you might not find at your local independent craft store. So you get those from us, but the things that I show you that you can get and support a small mom and pop shop, go, do. You know, we want you to, um, to, to appreciate it and they appreciate you. <laughs> we have so many people who email us and say, I have no small mom and pop shop. I have no shop at all. I'm left with the box stores and that's all I get. So if you're one of the lucky ones, walk in and say, hi, I'm Stacy. Do you have stays on ink? And if not, can you order it for me? And I bet they'd move heaven and earth to do what they could for you because that's how mom and pop shops are. <laughs> and then the things you can't find locally, then come online. And yes, the, the offering will be very, the YouTube yummies, we will not have all 120 colors of the markers because I want to be able to expedite orders out to you. So if you ordered from, from, what are we on? They're doing, they're working, they're working 255 right now, but getting ready to start 256. The Tim Holtz chapter three is gone. The crafters workshop is gone. The spellbinders we will have started by the time you see this and we just keep being the little engine that could. Now if expedited shipping doesn't, it doesn't mean any, you're good, you don't care, you get it when you get it. You can order anything in the store, anything in our online store and it, it will ship in our normal standard shipping time frame. If you want your order expedited, you need to confine it to what's in the YouTube Yummies category. All right, you guys, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. I hope you have a wonderful week. I will see you next Wednesday. I will see you next Wednesday for the sneak peek of our Friday expedited sale. <laughs> I can't tell you, but wow. And it's physically here. I don't think anybody else can say that quite yet. Hmm. <laughs> 
Bye. <laughs> Stacy Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Bye. <laughs>